What's that? But you can see your paper. It's in your camera. No, sorry. So, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Blocking myself. <laughs> Where we're at. Exactly. Where we're at. Where are you at? Well, right now I'm in New York. Where are you? In Toronto. Hi. Hey, Lana. Hey, Rebecca. How are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Long time no talk. And here we are. Hi, hi. Nice to see you. Here we are. So you and I have been talking since we hit 50 a few years back. uh, And what has occurred to us is there's a lot of stuff that we both seem to be thinking about in the middle of the night, um, issues that have cropped up. And I don't know. I just, uh, I thought maybe we should start talking and uh, bring other people into our conversation. Well, yeah. And I know we have also talked about the fact that all of our friends, everybody we know seems to be having these same conversations. You know, every time we talk to our girlfriends, it's about the same points, the same issues. And um, so we kind of had this idea that we should, you know, figure out how you get all your ducks in a row, get everything lined up for that next stage. The next stage, right? So I think... We've all been through it before. You and I both come from the world of, uh, well, you fashion, me entertainment. And what has sort of occurred to us is that anybody throughout stages in their lives usually has a little bit of a plan in place. And why should we not have this on the personal level and other people too? And we came up with, let's call them actionable steps, a roadmap, if you will. Um, And I'm sort of saying, you know, we're going to go along for the journey and you and I are going to try and figure this out and figure out all these little nagging issues and also some of the fun stuff. Well, uh, yes. That sort of hits you in your face. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, like some of the topics are much more fun than others, like, you know, dating, sex, your, you know, your friends and career pivots and things like that. And then other stuff are kind of, or your, as you call them, shots of awe, which is a fun thing, your hobbies, what really gives you joy. You know, other things are more of a slog. Those are the things that people really hesitate and take time getting in order. Like, like finances, exactly. yikes. All that kind of Wills. stuff. Wills. Yeah, which I was just talking looking about Looking after today. parents as they get older. Yeah, or looking after your kids, you know, like all this kind of stuff that's more... The kind of, you know, stuff you know you have to do, but you're procrastinating on. How do we get all that going? How do we get it all set up so that going into middle age isn't kind of a mess, you know, so that we feel like we're being grown up about it? Do you feel grown up? Oh my God, no. That's the thing. I'm not sure if I feel grown up yet, but I think that's the idea. So we want to get to a point where we're, we're moving forward with a little bit of a grip on it. No one ever talks about what really happens now. And I'm not just talking about menopause. I'm talking about all of it. You know, you think... I mean, I thought in my twenties, I'd know shit by now and that I'd have my stuff figured out. And I feel like I, I, I feel like Absolutely. I don't know anything. I feel like, oh my God, did my mom feel like that? Cause she certainly looked like she had her act together, but you know, maybe she didn't. And, and no one puts that out there that, that life's going to change and you really need to make sure or understand what's going on so that, you know, when you retire and you get older, it can, it's not such a, I don't know, crazy situation. There seems to be more and more women talking about this. We're not going to take this idea that, oh, you're not relevant anymore. You know, you, you know, who cares what you think? Blah, blah, blah. This whole ageist thing is kind of getting, it's getting old. It's access, right? It's getting old, right? on, take my body and glitter. Platform sneakers, the boys want to pitch Give me a little background. So you and I have known each other for a very long time, yes. but you know, where are you coming from? You know, what have you done? What sets you up um, at this point? And what wisdom are you bringing to the table for us? Well, I hope I can bring some wisdom. I hope I can bring some wisdom with a little bit of um, brevity and humor. Um, So uh, yeah, well, I mean, as you know, you know, I'm from Toronto also right now I'm in New York. Um, But my background in fashion modeling, you know, being a spokesperson, spokes for very big brands. Um, um, And then, you know, moving into fashion television as an on camera and a producer. One of Canada's most successful models, Lana Ogilvie, has posed for some of the world's most prestigious magazines like Vogue and for companies like Tia Maria and Absolute Vodka. In 1992, she made history by becoming the first black model to sign an exclusive contract with CoverGirl. I've always thought 
thought I knew how to handle myself in any kind of situation. I mean, I've traveled, I've done things. Maybe you should have gone to get hair and makeup first. Now, of course, what you don't see at Fashion Cares is where the real party is backstage with all the craziness, all the hair, all the makeup. Yeah, baby. You know, also, I'm a jeweler as well, which is just an odd thing thrown out in there. But art is my background. It's what I went to university for. And then... Um, I also am, have my skincare line that is actually sold in Canada. So I've kind of had my hands in a few different pots, um, you know, media, beauty, fashion, uh, design, and that's great. That's great. But I would just kind of like to figure out more how it can all come together and be maybe one thing under one umbrella, because I feel like all these little pots are kind of pulling me in different ways. And yes, and I'm, I'm a, a mom also like, you know, I have two kids, like you have two kids, two kids and raised them. And so, but you're always a mom, even if they're grown. Right. And you're a wife. Yes, uh, I am. And you're just fabulous all around. <laughs> I am. No, you are fabulous, so Rebecca. And I know your story. You certainly have much more media experience than me. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Rankin. Hi, I'm Rebecca Rankin. This is, of course, music's biggest night of the year. This is the CBS and VH1 Grammy countdown. I'm Rebecca Rankin. Good evening, and welcome to this week's edition of Facts. I'm Rebecca Rankin. I'm Rebecca Rankin. I'm Rebecca Rankin. Hello again. Hello. All right. I only agreed to do it because it was you. Music education was really important to you, obviously, really growing important. up. And music was really important. So, P. Diddy, Puffy, <laughs> Sean, tell me, but Michael Jackson, it's obviously, huge influence on a lot of people. Michael when growing up, you listening to him? Every day, all the time. I still listen to him just as much as I as I listened to him when I was growing up. I was just wondering how premeditated it was to have, you know, a helpless woman be the one who has to like this giant cat, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you roll yeah. on that? Oh, yes, it's a real thing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let me just change my bag. I just love these marketing concepts. Once upon a time when I was, you know, 15, like you, uh, a lot of people, I, I always say if you're, you know, five, nine and, and up, you know, they're going to tap you um, in the modeling world, right? So did that for a little bit, went to University of Toronto, did an undergrad, moved on, got into television, started as an executive assistant at Much Music City TV, um, learned camera along the way, was a videographer, Moved to New York, uh, worked for MTV Networks, and, which include, you know, all of Viacom's empire. Um, WABC after that in news. Um, and then moved to Los Angeles after New York. Uh, got pregnant with twins. Um, lived there for a time. Did some producing. Did some uh, producing production on short films. And then did a complete pivot um, when my twins were born after when my kids started school, it became evident that my son had some learning disabilities um, and other um, issues going on. Went back to school, did a master's in social work and sort of got into edu educational advocacy um, before moving back to Toronto during the pandemic. So <laughs> that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, along the way, I've had to sort of navigate um, a relationship with my children's dad, who I was married to. And that's, you know, luckily going fairly well right now. So that's great. And um, yeah, I think we bring to it, you know, and I'm just, I think I was really interested in this conversation because I always sort of looked at you and I thought, if Lana is feeling like this, we all have to be feeling like this, like a little bit of confusion and stuff. Cause you always seem like you've got everything together. And I think that's oh, the girl. point you can sort of follow the rules, but we all have stuff it's that we're trying to sort that, out in this liminal space. It's my so acting chops. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> what it is. Chops. Exactly. I'll tell you the biggest shock to me was last, last summer, I'm sitting there with, um, you know, my mother, my aunt, and, you know, a few, a few of the other women, you know, older women, and I'm with my cousin who's similar age, and we started talking, and then they said, well, of course, you know, grandma, meaning their mother, had her uterus removed when she was 50. And I said, what? <laughs> and apparently that was a that common practice. I had no earthly idea. And, and, and my dad's looking at me like, well, yeah, that's what women used to do. They used to, and I was like, why didn't the men just get a vasectomy? Like, like that's, and then that but is how, a non-invasive. Well, I think it was also, it was the idea, not, it wasn't to prevent pregnancy. It was for the menopause, right? So going through the, the symptoms of menopause, it was just easier. Yeah, here we go. So, wow. But what's interesting to me is every Every time I say that you and I are having these conversations, I say, oh my gosh, you should see Lana. She looks better now than she ever has. Like she's, you know, oh, thank you. You did and too. And everybody says, 
everybody says, well, because black don't crack. Oh my goodness. So, I love how oh, people, yeah, right? but I take care so, of my skin. I literally have a skincare line. Go to the bay. Please talk and about buy this. this shit, please talk man. about this because on, I don't I think it's easy it for anybody. Order. What the hell? Like you want to look good? Retinol. It's in there. An ocean-based, naturally derived retinol. I'm just going to do a plug while we're here for our sponsor, <laughs> Lana Ovi Cosmetics. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, no, but um, yeah, I I do think that it just it doesn't really matter. you you know, like you said, culturally or you know where you're from, any of that, because we're all looking at the same issues. And certainly, you know, I've talked to friends of mine who are you know um, straight, gay, bi, trans you know, from different cultures, white, black, you know, Indian, um, Trinidadian, da, da, you know, just all kinds of people. And everybody has the same, same issues. The, you know, of course, depending on your personality, some of the women were like overjoyed to be in this new stage, in this new chapter, and where are we going? You know, and some of them were just like, I don't want to talk about it. It's too depressing. Yes. And I will also add, though, that coming from the world of kind of entertainment, you know, for you, fashion, you know, where there's so much emphasis on physical appearance and that's kind of all it counts. You know, I think it's actually for me, I feel like it's it's a great stage because now I'm like what we said before. It's like, I don't give a fuck. You can say what you want. It's like I just it is what it is. And I think that, you know, I've got a ways to go till I hundred percent, you know, have everything together. But you know, what, I feel Rebecca, like in terms of a lot of it, I'm kind of like, I don't think I you're feel, ever going like to have good. Percent here. Like, and I'm not oh, saying yeah, that because no, it's you. <laughs> I'm saying that she's going to be like, bitch, I'm going to get my shit together and I'm going to show you. I'm good.